welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. Over the past seven years, we've understood what matters most to you, the entrepreneur. And in year eight, we're taking head on two of your most pressing concerns, that of funding and mentoring. I'm Sunanda Jai Seelan. On the show tonight, two special series. First up on our Eye on Dubai series, a deeper dive as far as the fintech market in Dubai is concerned with our interview with DIFC Fintech Hive. We'll also bring you our undaunted great series, Valentine Godfrey presents 12 Undaunted Greats tonight, is with Instamojo. Raja Al Mazuri joining us live from Dubai. She's the EVP of DIFC FinTech Hive to talk about the FinTech market in Dubai and give us her expert take. Raja, good having you on the show. You know, I want to kickstart this uh, conversation by trying to get the big picture as far as the FinTech market in Dubai is concerned. In India, reports suggesting that nearly 52% of all Indians have been, uh, as far as uh, adoption of FinTech is concerned, amongst the fastest adopters uh, anywhere in the world, driven, of course, by a lot of policy changes. But what's the situation like uh, in Dubai? Can you tell us? India has been leading in towards adoption of technology across all sectors and uh, with the aim of including more people into the financial services sector. And like India, Dubai has been leading the region in adoption of financial technology, innovation and financial services, and building an ecosystem to enable financial innovation to grow and to be adopted uh, in this region. We expect in, uh, investments in fintech to reach more than $2 billion by 2022, according to a study we have conducted a couple of years ago. We have uh, launched uh, the fintech hive uh, from the DIFC to enable engagement with financial technology through collaboration with financial institutions, as we see the importance of this engagement and its effect on the sector. Okay, fair enough. What really has been uh, both DIFC as well as FinTech Hive's role when it comes to ensuring that the changes as far as FinTech adoption uh, is you know, happening faster? What has really been the role? What can you tell us? The DIFC took the role of building an enabling ecosystem for financial technology startups to grow from the region and to collaborate with key players in financial services sector. DIFC is home for more than 2,400 companies, of which their main core activity is financial services. As a leading global financial hub, our role is to engage our uh, ecosystem with technology that is disrupting across. We also have launched certain uh, financial technology regulations to enable these innovations be practiced from the DIFC. We have also launched a $100 million fund for investment in fintech from the DIFC to support and energize the industry. Let's continue talking in depth about uh, FinTech Hive. I do want to get a sense of how many companies you expect will be a part of FinTech Hive by 2020. Uh, uh, and also, if you can talk to us about the 2020 Accelerator Program, what more can you tell our viewers on that? We launched our first Accelerator Program back in 2017. We received 100 applications and we have accelerated 11 companies. In 2019, which was our third uh, cohort, we received more than 425 applications and we've accelerated 31 companies through the engagement. Today, we have accelerated more than 80 companies from all over the world and our companies together have raised more than $120 million. 2020 is a big year and our numbers will be bigger than ever. We have uh, more interest from the financial services institutions that are interested to learn more and engage deeper with financial technology. And we have created a brand that is uh, known in many parts of the world. We have proved that this program uh, accelerates the access to the market, to the players, to the regulation and to funding. And we expect to receive much more applications from all over the world for this program. 
Raja, I do also want to talk about uh, one uh, specific programs and two uh, any specific case studies of Indian businesses and Indian entrepreneurs who are a part of uh, FinTech Hive that you can share with us. The DIFC FinTech Hive signed an MOU with FinTech Mumbai because it's a very important strategic partner uh, to build and enable the ecosystem. Through this MOU and through participation in FinTech related events in India, we target to attract the Indian fintech startups to join our ecosystem and to access the regional opportunities through the fintech hive. It's a natural uh, growth destination for startups uh, coming from India because once they prove their technology in the Indian market, they can seamlessly integrate them in the region through the support and ecosystem of the DIFC fintech hive. We will connect them with the uh, regulators, we will connect them with business opportunities, we will provide them access to funding if they need it. But uh, Dubai, the UAE and India has very strong relationships and uh, we have uh, clo close cultural ties that enables uh, this innovation to flow from India and grow towards the region uh, through Dubai. Here in India, Raja, we talk about financial inclusion, particularly because the government is on this big push when it comes to financial inclusion. So I do want to talk about financial inclusion, you know, uh, being one of the biggest goals, really, if I can call it that, of the fintech market. What's the situation like uh, in Dubai? What perhaps is being done on the ground towards that? Financial inclusion is a big priority for the region. The uh, world has more than uh, 3 billion people, and out of which more than two-thirds have access to mobile phones. And if we can enable the access to financial services through these technologies, then we will be able to include these people in the financial services sector and help them contribute to the economy through that. And that's one of the um, uh, key priorities for FinTech. I know that um, it's one of our key priorities. It's uh, a top agenda on all financial institutions, including the World Bank, the IFC, and the World Economic Forum, because providing access will actually develop the economy further, and this is a, a, a great cause to believe in, support, and to champion. Raja, you know, um, for uh, all the biggest newsmakers uh, who've been speaking about the growth and the opportunities really in Dubai, uh, talking about the opportunities as far as women in the economy is concerned, Ivanka Trump, I do know, was there recently as part of the Global Women's Forum that was held uh, in Dubai, talking about the achievements uh, really of the region. Uh, if we include women, no matter you know what country, what region of the world, the contribution to the GDP, the contribution to the economy is incre you know, going to increase exponentially. I want to get your views on that. So at the Global Women's Forum, uh, the head of the IMF said that if we include women in the economy, we will be able to create an additional wealth of $27 trillion. And that is really important because that's wealth for all and it will create bigger opportunities for everyone to partake in the economy. Uh, the UAE and Dubai are committed to engaging uh, women within the development of this country. We have 50% of the Federal National Council represented by women and more than one third of the government is being represented by women. Even as we're talking about uh uh, innovation, Raja, we are also talking about the fact that you have a lot of fintech companies in India which are now competing with your traditional businesses, traditional banks. And that was perhaps bound to happen, but I want to get a sense of what really is going on uh, in Dubai, what is happening in the region, and whether in your mind you see it as collaboration or competition. What are your views? We continue to encourage the collaboration between the financial institutions and fintechs. Now, there are few of them that are able to operate individually, provided that they have the right regulation in place and the enough funding to grow by themselves. However, most of the technologies that we see, we realize that the collaboration with the financial institutions will create bigger value for the fintech uh, startups and also for the banks. Uh, uh, one of our uh, partners, Emirates MBD, is one of the largest banks in the region, and they have created a digital sandbox for fintechs to test their technology in that sandbox. And we certify them post-completion of that testing. And that 
that enables them to go to other financial institutions and say, my, I am technology ready, I've tested with Emirates MBD, and he, here is my certificate. We see different type of engagements, and we support all of them. However, uh, the value that comes from enabling the collaboration with financial institutions is uh, realized uh, faster compared on, uh, to uh, taking it individually. We have a special segment here on the Leaders of Tomorrow called Game Changers, where we feature women in different industries. Uh, as a woman leader, my question to you is if you can talk specifically for the women entrepreneurs uh, and the women who are watching this interview perhaps about the opportunities, the challenges, your views, your personal advice and journey. My advice to women entrepreneurs actually is really to believe in themselves to pitch their ideas with full confidence and ask for help and ask for investment as they need it. There is a lot of research that's proven in the market that says women-led businesses uh, have a higher success rate because of the commitment of these women's and uh, visions and ambitions. All right, let's slip into a short break. On that note, Insta Mojo is a Ballantine golf retreat, presents 12 undaunted greats showcase tonight. We'll tell you more on the company on the other side. Just stay tuned. Welcome back. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. And tonight on our special series, Ballantine Golf Retreat presents 12 Undaunted Crates. Our focus is on Instamojo. We're continuing to take a look at the fintech space and the innovation in the fintech space. And this time in conversation with Sampath, the co-founder of Instamojo, talking about his personal entrepreneurial journey, talking about the fintech and the payments market here in India, how that is changing and data security, amongst other things. Take a listen. Lovely to have you on the show. Thank you for um, having me. You know, it's very interesting to find a company that is supporting uh, SMEs and MSMEs like you are. Uh, it's uh, InstaMojo is a company that started in 2012 um, as a platform, free platform for MSMEs. Right. Can you explain how your journey has been so far? We uh, founded the company in 2012. We launched in 2013. Uh, the premise was very simple. We wanted to basically help small businesses come online and participate in the digital economy. We founded the company in the premise that can we help the small businesses use payments and along with payments can we build an entire ecosystem of tools and services for them to participate, right? And uh, the journey has been pretty fantastic, so happy to be here. Great. Uh, can you explain how, how InstaMojo works and what is your business model? Sure. Primarily, if you have a bank account and a phone number, you should be able to register on the platform. It, you can download the app from the Play Store or you can register on InstaMojo.com. And, and it's a free-flowing uh, mechanism. You onboard yourself and uh, then you give some details about your business, what you want to do on the platform, and then go about and create either your free store, online store, or create a payment link for uh, payment collections, right? And one of the two ways you can essentially uh, get started in less than two minutes. So that's how you get started. Great. Um, in the fintech space, I'd love to understand what are the kind of challenges that you've faced. And because you are a free platform, how are you making money? Well, our primary transaction model, uh, revenue model is transaction. So uh, our belief is as you make a lot of money, we end up making a bit of money, right? Uh, we've created a lot of uh, multiple services around payments and payment links in online store. Uh, the challenges are multifold actually. So essentially when we started the business, we never had uh, a, a counterparty that right, you can copy from. So a lot of the things we had to kind of custom build by ourselves, learn from our mistakes. But given the experience in the last half a decade of building the platform and serving uh, close to a million merchants, right, 700,000 we have acquired so far, 
uh, now obviously uh, the journey is much more easier. The daunting task is now security, uh, uh, viability and, and affordability and, and we are touching the heartland of India as we say, right, beyond the metros and all. So those are the few challenges that are still remain to be there to be tackled. Yeah, you talked about security. Uh, my next question was based on that. When it comes to data security, you know, a lot of companies have onboarded on InstaMojo. I'd love to understand how are you making sure that, you know, uh, you're making it safe, um, the data is safe of your all your merchants that are on the platform. Sure, there are two halves of it. One is your data security. So we, as a payment company, as we are processing your transaction, so we have to go through a global standard called PCI DSS. We are level one company, which is the highest standard in the world. Uh, that's one. The other side is we have multiple tiers of data security, right? When you give us information and data about your business, we store it in multiple ways where even at times we as, as uh, founders, we, not, we don't have access. So there are multiple keys to attach to go and access a key, right? So And there are trails, data trails. We get to know who is accessing what and when. And then you have multiple tiers attached to it. At the same time, we are continuously looking at how to improve it. Like we do regular monitoring. At the same time, we do frequent uh, investigations. Like every 15 to 30 days, we keep on checking the viability of the data and the sanctity of the data. Because at the end of the day, we're talking about small businesses coming to a digital platform, maybe for the first time. And a one bad experience leaves a bad taste. And, and that kind of corrupts uh, multiple other opportunities for us and for others. So sure. take it really seriously. Great. One more thing that uh, you know is interesting is because you have so many merchants on the platform, and you did say that you know you give a solution on based of the merchants' needs. How are you making sure that you know um, you ensure quality throughout for each of these players? It's a journey. <laughs> I wish I can tell you that yes, we have achieved it, but uh, I think I think uh, having half a million, over half a million merchants using the platform, right? That shows that we have been able to touch the nerve center, if you may, uh, for the small and micro businesses of India, right? And uh, as I said, it's a journey. Uh, uh, we continuously learn from their feedback. As I said, we are one of the few businesses, if not the only large businesses catering to MSMEs of the country. So there's a continuous feedback loop that you have with our, with our customers. They teach us a lot about their needs. We kind of verify with multiple other opportunities that you have. And then we establish that this is the need and this is the gap and it makes sense for us to go ahead and, and create that solution for them, right? And as I said, it's actually going to be a journey as we speak because the first million people who come on InstaMojo as we are in the journey, uh, I don't necessarily believe the next 10 million will, will, will require the same thing. They may require something different, right? So, so uh, 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 we'll continue the journey and uh, we'll hopefully uh, uh, we'll, we'll establish our dominance in the market as we go along. Great. Um, you recently raised a Series B round of funding. I'd love to understand how are you using these funds or how are you planning to use these funds? Well, the three-prong approach. One is obviously, uh, as we said, we are going to continue building the platform out. So that requires us to invest a lot in, in the team. So obviously team building is one of the prerogative for us to invest the capital in. Second thing is uh, we continue to go basically invest a lot in mobile. Uh, half a decade back when we started the business, we, we were desktop only because that was the era. While a lot of investment, uh, venture capital investment got into consumer and they kind of got uplifted in the environment, uh, none did not happen for the merchants, right? At the same time, in the last one year, we have seen uh, from single digit percentage of merchants using a mobile platform to almost now 60-70% of small businesses are now using a mobile app, right? So we're investing a lot on mobile technology for FI20 and onwards. And the third area is we feel we are in the right in the center of actually creating a one of a kind community for small businesses. Because I always thought there are multiple global platforms available for professionals to so and so forth, right? Where isn't there isn't any for MSMEs, right? So maybe we want to take a lead forward and create multiple community platform for MSMEs in, in India. Great. Um, so you did talk about manpower and investing in people. How difficult is it to hire in this space? Because fintech is something that's obviously evolving with technology. How are you hiring? Um, well, we try to a, keep a very high bar when you try to hire people. At the same time, uh, we want to obviously, we are at the epicenter of, of uh, uh, technology in India, Bangalore. Uh, we, uh, a lot of people don't know about us. We actually founded the company in Bombay. Uh, we shifted in 2015 for the same reason of hiring talent in India. Uh, uh, it's been hard, but I guess in Bangalore, the opportunity size and number of people in technology looking out for opportunities like us and exciting large opportunities growing, right? Uh, so I believe in the right time, in the right market, and uh, we will make sense out of it. 
Great. Uh, when it comes to technology, obviously there's a lot of upgradation happening in the sector itself. How are you making sure that you know you have the latest technology? Uh, because uh, now we live in a very digitized world. Um, while you're in India, I bet that you know you all you are looking at international competition. How are you making sure that you're um, you know upgraded completely in in due to you well, know, different standards? The same guys who are building technology for Western counterparts are the same guys who are building technology for a company like Instamojo, right? So. Uh, I think I think the quality and the technology will be pretty much at parity with any global counterpart that may or may want to offer this to the kind of merchants we are going after. So I don't think there will be a challenge. The question is, however, which solution or product experience you want to build in to begin with? Uh, because you have to appreciate the fact MSMEs are possibly coming and joining this digital revolution for the first time, a lot of them. We can't expect them to believe and experience things the way we as consumers have been experiencing for half a decade or more, right? So we are at right in the center to understand you as an MSME, you require X. And we also have the data and understanding X should be this, not otherwise, right? And that gives us a huge leg up than any other competition uh, uh, going forward, right? And we harness the data and understanding about their needs to create the right piece of technology and then cater to them uh, through mobile and web. Great, um, you know, so let's end this interview by asking, what do you think is the future of InstaMojo? Well, uh, uh, the vision is very simple uh, to help uh, uh, MSMEs become more enterprising so that they take the first confident step in this digital economy, right? Uh, we'll continue the journey. Uh, I wish I can tell you the end result of InstaMojo. Uh, super exciting phase for all of us, not just us in our company, but across a uh, plethora of startups going after consumers, merchants. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, exciting times. Uh, we as a company are very excited. Uh, we're growing really fast, right? And, and uh, as I said, a uh, uh, year back we were known as a payments company. Now we have become a growth gateway company. We're able to help you in start, sell, manage, and grow with our three business lines, Mojo Commerce, Mojo Payments, and Mojo Capital. Uh, and I hope year on year we should continue growing and uh, hope we become one of the largest uh, digital platform for MSMEs in India. So that's the dream and we will continue the journey. Completely out of time on this episode, but our uh, contact details are coming up on your screens in just a moment. Do let us know what you thought of tonight's interviews. If you have any feedback for us, do let us know. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.